This video is the first in a series on digital illustration. And I'm starting out, this is bare bones basics. If I'm opening Photoshop for the first time with the intention of drawing something, how do I set it up? What do I need to do in order to use a Wacom tablet and then open a canvas of an appropriate size utilize it in here, what settings need to be changed, anything like that. So if you're starting out for the very first time, this is the perfect video to start with. Uh, the first thing is, here's Photoshop as it will appear when you open it up. Now Photoshop, as the name would suggest, is actually more for editing photos originally, but since then it has evolved to do other things. So they're assuming when you first open it, they give you the essentials, the basics, but you can lay out a Photoshop interface any way that you want to they actually have one already that's set up for painting and that's the one that you should probably switch to so before I do anything I can go up to the window option and workspace and you'll see one an option here that says painting and when you adjust that it's going to give you just your layers over here on the side and then something very important as well that you'll see here in a minute which is the navigator it basically shows you a smaller version of your composition so that it's almost like you can see it from a distance at the same time that you're working up close very helpful for seeing how things are actually working out in the grand scheme of things. Now the first thing that we'll have to do is open up a new canvas and this is one of these that that creates a little bit of a question what size canvas should I be using uh, when I'm drawing digitally? That is one of the questions that I faced most when I started out how at what resolution at what size should I be working at? Uh, first go to file and new and it will open up this dialog box which it put on my other monitor just to irritate me and I've already been messing around with it in here usually when you come in you'll see something like this it'll be set to uh, default Photoshop size which is 5 by 7 inches or sometimes US paper which is an 8.5 by 11 one thing you'll notice about both of these is that US paper the default Photoshop size if it's listed in inches it'll most likely say 300 pixels per inch right here that's because 300 pixels per inch is standard for when you're doing something in print. So if you're thinking in terms of real world paper, 300 pixel, pixels per inch is where you should have it. But oftentimes I don't work that big, especially if it's not intended to be printed. Maybe it's just intended to be created and emailed or uploaded onto a portfolio site. So you don't necessarily have to work at that size. My general size that I will go to is an 11 by 17 which is a pretty standard art pad it's also uh, if you open up a magazine the size of that spread of both pages is 11 by 17 so that's a pretty standard print size it's really easy to get your hands on so that's usually what I work in unless I need to work on a different size so I'll probably do a width of 11 and a, I'm sorry a width of 17 height of 11 and then the resolution again if it's going to print I'm gonna keep it at 300 if it's not going to print, I'm probably going to drop it down to about 200. That way I still have a little bit extra size, but it's not as taxing on the system itself. That's fairly arbitrary, though. You can work at 300, just sometimes the computer slows down. You find that you have to switch out a little bit. Now, the, immediately what this does is it will throw a white background up. And I can theoretically draw directly on this, but I don't really recommend doing it. If you look over in the Layers palette over on the right, which should be prominent now that you've switched over to your painting workspace you'll notice it says background it has a lock on it you don't want to draw necessarily just on the background because then if you erase something there's a big gap showing uh, I can demonstrate that if I unlock this and then run an eraser through it I can see the transparency in the background so you don't necessarily want to draw on that Instead, what you can do is go down to the bottom of the Layers palette to this sticky note button. This is Create a New Layer. And then you can draw there. The tool that you'll be using to draw is rarely actually a pencil. Instead, it's a brush. So the one here that if I hover over says Brush Tool. It looks like a standard paint brush. It can get confusing, though, because there's other types of brushes here. So just make sure you have the absolutely standard brush and if I click that that's what we actually use to draw and you can probably tell this does not look like a, a realistic pen stroke pencil stroke at all and that's because I did it with the mouse 
But that's at this point is when I would switch over to my my Wacom pen so that I can draw like this. One thing you do want to do before you get started is after you've selected the brush, we have brush controls all across the top. This includes the size of the brush, the type of the brush, the uh, blending mode of the brush, the opacity of the brush, the flow. Usually I don't really mess with the flow, I stick with the opacity. And then there's this little button right here that if you hover over it should say, I'm trying to remember the wording, always uses pressure for size. When off, brush preset controls the pressure. So there's a lot of different things you can do to brushes to set them, but a lot of times you're going to want to go ahead and have this checked unless you're using very special brushes where you know that it's not needed. What this does is it makes sure that it responds to pressure. So if I push down harder, it gets thicker. If I let up, it gets lighter. And that's what gives you a realistic look from your pin strokes. That's what actually makes it seem like strokes as you would do them on paper. So if you're working that way, if you're just working with regular pen or something like a pencil, you want to make sure you have that checked because that will give you the best results regardless of what brush you're using. Again, there's a lot of complexity, a lot of stuff you can do with brush presets, individual brushes, you can create your own, you can customize them, but that's a little more advanced than we need to get at this point. I'm just showing you how to get started. So a layer, a separate layer here to work on, uh, using the brush tool, making sure that this little button here is indented, and with our new layout, you can see over here on the side, as I'm drawing, it appears, so I can keep an eye on what this looks like. The idea being that if I'm zoomed in and I'm doing some detail work here, very happy individual, then you can still see the whole canvas there. It helps you be able to see the big picture as you're working. So these are kind of the important elements and again this is a 11 by 17 sheet and that's a good place to get started with digital illustration